thanks everybody for joining. Uh, so this is this is a very exciting thing and, and a very big day because today, as you all know, is the day when the IRS is beginning to either direct deposit or send out uh, the uh, the payments that um, parents of children will be receiving on the fifteenth uh, of every month. Um, uh, as part of the fully refundable child tax credit that we adopted earlier this year in the American Rescue Plan. This is, um, this is one of the biggest and most important piece of pieces of legislation that Congress has passed, I think, in generations. In the 1930s, we decided as a country that uh, we were going to create uh, security for people who uh, were retiring. Um, through the Social Security program to ensure that, that nobody um, past retirement age would fall into poverty simply because they could no longer work. And today, we're making a very similar decision about people who are too young to work, that nobody, uh, no child in America should um, be born into and be stuck in extreme poverty um, through no fault of their own simply because of the situation that their parents are in. Many other countries have this kind of family-friendly policy. The United States has not, and partly as a result, we have the highest rate of child poverty in America of, of any wealthy industrial country in the world. So the idea here is something that has been championed for many, many years by both Democrats and Republicans. Um, the idea of uh, a child tax credit or child allowance something that would empower parents to be able to make good choices for their children, to afford food and housing and rent and childcare, things that are a source of anxiety for so many working parents um, and middle-class parents across our country. And the result is this program um, where, uh, as you all know, uh, we, will be, um, uh, we will be providing a fully refundable credit of 250 bucks for kids between six and 18, $300 for kids under um, uh, the age uh, of, uh, of six, um, which hopefully is gonna be made permanent uh, in legislation that we pass in the Congress uh, this summer, but we do have it for this year. It's been estimated um, that, uh, that with this, child allowance on top of some of the other things that we did in the American Rescue Plan earlier this year, we will cut child poverty in America by more than half. At no point in American history have we done something like that in one year. The most we've ever cut child poverty in a year by any combination of measures has been maybe between five and 10%. Um, in our congressional district, in the seventh district in New Jersey, about 92,000 kids are going to benefit, about 3,000 of them lifted out of poverty, about 600 lifted out of abject, extreme poverty. And for the rest, for the majority, it, it is probably the most significant middle-class tax cut that we have had in America in a very, very long time. And I'm proud to be part of a Congress that when we were thinking about um, how to give people tax relief, we started with working people and with the middle class not with hedge fund managers and corporations like we saw in the 2017 uh, tax bill. So this is where we are. The good news is for the vast majority of us, a vast majority of, of parents with kids, this is gonna be incredibly simple. It's just a payment that's gonna arrive um, in uh, every the 15th of every month in your checking account. But of course, for some, it's not gonna be simple. I know that there are questions and issues out there um, about who is eligible. Um, questions about uh, families where we have divorced parents and joint uh, custody and other more complicated uh, arrangements. Um, there may be folks, um, I think in a limited number of cases, who may find it advantageous to opt out of the monthly payments. And I'm sure we'll go over some of those cases uh, today and how best to do that. And so to answer all those questions in those complicated cases, we're really happy to, to have Kate uh, uh, from the IRS with us. She's joined us many times before, and I'm always grateful that she's willing to give her time to, uh, to folks in, in our district 
uh, to, to make, make sure that we get the full benefit of the benefits that the Congress has approved. So with that, Kate, over to you, and then uh, we'll look forward to everybody's questions. Okay, that sounds great. Thank you so much. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. I have a very brief presentation um, today and hopefully, <laughs> uh, and I, but I do wanna just cover some of the um, big topics uh, and, and maybe I'll answer some questions here at the outset. Um, and if not, then I will be around to do so afterwards. So first and foremost, I really appreciate the opportunity to share this information with you, um, to answer any questions that you have. And I do wanna let you know that the irs.gov website has a lot of information um, that that can guide you if if you know you miss something today or or something comes up down the road. We are keeping um, keeping the information up to date as best we can, and things things are changing here and there um, with with some frequency. So I do encourage you to um, to check that out if need be. So the first thing I want to say is the child tax credit is not new this year, but with the American Rescue Plan, it has been expanded um, quite significantly. Uh, first of all, the, in prior years, the credit was worth $2,000. Now, um, as the congressman said, for children under six, it's worth $3,600. For children between the ages of six and 17, it's worth $3,000. It's also fully refundable which means that not only can it offset your tax liability if you have one, um, if you don't have one, then the full payment can come to you and, and as such, it can increase your refund. So that's very exciting as well. Um, just a note as to determining um, a qualifying child's age, it would be their age as of December 31st, 2021, and that would be for this year. Otherwise, um, if, if this does become permanent, it would be you know the last day of the year moving forward. So it's whatever age they are as of the last day of the year. Okay, um, one of the other expansions that the American Rescue Plan created is, uh, is permission for the IRS to, um, ad, to send out the credit uh, in the form of, of advanced payments rather than just waiting until a tax return is filed, which is how credits normally work. Um, in order to make this happen, the IRS is using information that we have on file, either from a 2019 tax return or a 2020 tax return that has been filed and fully processed. Um, also, if you used the non-filer portal that was created last year uh, for, for the purposes of getting the first economic impact payment, if you input information there as well, then the payments, the advanced child tax credit payments should be automatically coming to you as well. Um, I do want to let you know that the advance payments will total 50% of what we estimate the credit to be. So for example, if you have a three-year-old on your 2020 tax return, um, the credit would be worth 3,600. Half of that would be 1,800. And then because we have six months, because we're starting today and we will have six payments left in the year, each payment would be worth $300. Um, same, same logic for the older children, but the payment would be $250. So I just want to explain that it's, it won't be the full credit amount, but it will be half. Um, and that's kind of, that's a good thing because just in case, you know, you get more than, than you're supposed to, um, you won't be caught having to pay back, uh, you know, the full credit amount if, if, you know, you find yourself in that situation. Um, I, I did mention the non-filer portal. I'm going to actually discuss that in a couple of minutes. Um, and I'm also going to mention the child tax credit update portal, which is referenced on this slide as well. That is new for the child tax credit uh, for the advanced payments in particular. So I briefly want to go over eligibility. Um, there are a lot of nuances, but generally speaking, um, anyone who is filing a tax return and has a qualifying child 
who they are permitted to claim as a dependent um, is eligible for the credit as long as the filer and the child both have a valid social security number or ITIN and they live in the United States as their primary residence for more than half the year. Um, additionally, there is a, an adjusted gross income, an income threshold uh, to determine the amount of the credit. Basically, if you are a single filer and you make, well, and your adjusted gross income is $75,000 or less, you will receive the full amount. Um, for a joint filer, that figure is doubled. So the 75,000 becomes 150,000. Now that is just to receive the full amount of the credit. If your adjusted gross income exceeds that, uh, you can still get, get a credit. It would just be decreased as the income increases. It is not fully phased out until a single, single filer's adjusted gross income is 240,000 and the joint filers would be 440,000. So it takes a while for the credit to be phased out and thus a lot of people can benefit um, from, from the child tax credit. Uh, the last thing I wanna talk about are, are three different tools that the IRS has on our website. The first is this Advanced Child Tax Credit Eligibility Assistant. This will not give you um, specific information. It will, it's not definitive. It's not, uh, it's not a guarantee that you will qualify, but um, this is very useful for someone who doesn't typically file or, or isn't particularly uh, familiar with credits. You just, it's an interactive tool. You answer questions about your own circumstance and then the tool will tell you if, if you qualify. So that's a, a good thing to start with if, if you're not sure. Uh, secondly, as I mentioned before, the, the non-filer tool has made a comeback. It is revised. Um, it, is, it is essentially been revised to allow people to enter information so that they can get the advance payments of the child tax credit. But as an added bonus, because of the way it works, if you have not filed a tax return and you are not required to do so, if you haven't received uh, your economic impact payments or, um, or maybe not the full amount that you are entitled to, you will be able to get those as well by entering your information here. Um, a note of caution, you don't want to use this tool if you do have a filing requirement or if you have already filed a tax return. I know a lot of people are still waiting on their returns to be processed, but, um, but you can't really use this tool if, if we already have a return in the system. Um, oh, one other thing about the non-filer tool, you will be able to input banking information here. So, um, so that's great as well, because if you do that, then your uh, advanced payments and your economic impact payments, if, if that applies, can come directly into your bank account. And that is the best way um, to, to obtain the funds. Okay, and the last portal I wanna talk about is the Child Tax Credit Update Portal, CTC Up. We do love our acronyms. Um, this one is, uh, I just want to point out that on the website right now, this one comes up under um, under a, a link that says manage your advance payment of your child tax credit or something. It's, it's a manage tool. And the reason is because the purpose of it is to is to give us specific information about um, about your eligibility for the child tax credit. But I don't want you to go looking for it and then not find this and, and be mad. <laughs> it, it is there um, on, on the main child tax credit page, uh, but it just, it's, it's not under this name. So anyway, uh, this tool will let you view your eligibility. Unlike the assistant, this will give you information that is specific to you and it is definitive. Um, the reason we can do that here is because when you log into this one, you do have to use um, a password. You have to, you know, have your ID verified uh, in order to access it, much like you would um, for, for an online banking system or something like that. Uh, right now, this tool is primarily being used for eligibility information and to opt out 
or to unenroll from getting the advance payments if that's something that you want to do. Uh, it's too late to do that for the July payment, but you can opt out at any time for the rest of the year as long as you do so before the cutoff for the upcoming payment. Uh, we will have a schedule for, um, for people to see when, when they have to opt out by or when they have to enter information by to get the following month's payment. Um, this one will also let you update banking information. I think you can do that now. And then I don't have uh, a definite time, but, but I'm told that by the end of the summer slash beginning of the fall, this tool will be expanded so that um, people can enter information that, that we may not know. For example, if you had a baby born in 2021, that wouldn't be on your tax return that we have on file, but you can put that information here and then you can begin getting um, payments for that child. You can also update your income. Um, you know, if, if, if you might be, maybe your income has decreased and so you'd be eligible for a larger payment. So um, you, can, you can update that information here as well. You can also update your address. And if you have opted out of receiving the advance payment, you can also re-enroll in this portal eventually. Um, none of those things are available now, but they will be. I think that's it. Um, I, I know I went kind of quick, but I do want to leave time for your questions. I just wanted to show you this is the, um, the irs.gov child tax credit page. And there you can see the manage payments. That's where you will find the CTC up portal if you are looking for it. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's all I want to say for now. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over and open up for questions. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Thanks, Kate, and thanks, Tom. We are going to go into a few frequently asked questions that were submitted beforehand, but if you do have a live question, please first ask your question using that chat feature at the bottom of your screen. If you don't uh, hear your FAQ that you might have asked beforehand asked, we ask you please just put it again in the chat feature for it to be addressed live today for either Tom or Kate on this topic. All right, uh, for our first pre-submitted question, is there an income limit to receive the credit? So yes, there is. Um, you know, the, the income limit is, it's based on your adjusted gross income. For a single filer, uh, if you have an adjusted gross income less than $240,000, you will receive some portion of the credit. For a joint filer, it's $440,000. Um, in order to be eligible for the full amounts, a single filer is $75,000 or less. A joint filing couple is $150,000 or less. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, next up, are children born in 2021 eligible? Yes, they are. And um, as I said, they, we the IRS would not know about a baby born in 2021 yet, but um, in the coming weeks, you will be able to uh, provide us with that information online in the CTC Up portal. And we certainly encourage you to do so. Thank you. All right, we're going to take one more FAQ and then we will go into some of your live questions. For our last FAQ, who will receive the credit if separated families alternate claiming children on their tax returns? Okay, so this is this is a, a very good question um, and one that we are getting quite a bit. So it's a little confusing. The way the advanced payments work is whatever information we have on file that's most current um, is, is where we will send the payment. So if if someone claimed their child in 2020 and, and we have that information on a process tax return and they're eligible, then we would begin issuing the advance payments to them. If it's the situation where you alternate years, then essentially what would happen is we would ask the individual um, who will not be claiming the kids this year to opt out of getting the payments. And then the individual who, who would claim the kids this year will um, go in and update the portal when 
as soon as they can to let us know that, that they are actually entitled to the credit for this year. Now, if for some reason that doesn't work, um, I do want to, to make it clear that you, if you do not receive the advance payments this year for whatever reason, but you are entitled to the credit, you can still get the credit when you file your tax return. I know that's not ideal. Um, the point is we wanna get the money out now, but, um, but like I said, we will use whatever information we have on file from the most recent filing. And uh, you know, in order to, to make sure it's correct, if, you, if you're receiving payments and you won't be entitled to the credit this year, we would ask that you opt out. So that, um, so that we can get the correct credit amount to the right person. Thanks, Kate. Sure. All right, let's go into our live questions. Again, we have a few coming in, um, but if you do have a question to ask on this topic, please do so first in the chat feature, and then I will call on you. I will let you know uh, when you are up next to have your question addressed today. First up, we have Russ from Hillsboro. Russ, can you hear us? Uh, yes, I'm here. Go ahead with your question. Hi. So my question is, I have an issue uh, with my the account that the IRS has on file. Uh, so uh, are there paper paper checks that are going to be sent out instead? Yes. I, it's my understanding that we will be issuing the advanced payments as either a direct deposit, if we have that information, or as a paper check. And if we attempt to make a direct deposit, but it doesn't um, go through for be either because the account is wrong or it's closed, then when we get that information from the bank, we will um, automatically send out a paper check instead. Fantastic. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Russ. Our next up, we have Tara from Glen Gardner. Tara, can you hear us? Yes, thank you. Go ahead. Um, so my question is my 2020 tax return has not been processed. I did file it. So my eligibility is based off of my 2019. Uh, my income has changed and I've also had a baby um, in 2020. So that information has not been updated. How will my payments and eligibility be impacted once my 2020 return's been processed? Well, the good news is, uh, the good news is, as soon as your return is processed, we will automatically update that information. So, if you receive your payment this month, let's say, um, and it doesn't include the adjustments, doesn't include your baby, um, then you'll, you know, unfortunately, we can't, uh, we can't adjust that amount, but. We will update the payment for next month if it's processed in time. Um, if it's not processed in time for August, then we will do so for September and so on. Um, and I also, I wanna mention that you will still get the same amount um, of advance payment that you're entitled to whether your first payment goes out in July or in October. Um, it'll just be, they'll, they'll be equal payments for the remainder of the year for as many uh, payments as we have left. You'll still get that 50% of whatever we determine the credit amount to be for you. So you shouldn't have to take any, any action. You just, other than just um, continuing to be patient, which we really appreciate. Great, thank you. Thanks, Tara. Let's go to Adrian in Berkeley Heights. Adrian, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for doing this. Um, I had a, a quick question. How can I confirm that all three of my children are in the system for the child tax credit payments? We had a lot of trouble with the IRS processing our 2019 return. So we're just wondering how we can confirm that all three are in there. Well, the, the first thing I would suggest is looking in the CTC up portal. You can confirm your eligibility there. Uh, if, if that doesn't work for you, um, which it doesn't for everyone, there's also, you can, you can actually create your own account on irs.gov that, um, that shows what we have on file in terms of your, your most recent filing. So if your tax return there shows that all three of your children are included, then um, I think it's safe to, conf to assume that, they, that the payments will, will include all three. Uh, lastly, if, if you, know, you can always call, I know, <laughs> I know that's not the best um, course of action, uh, but you can certainly call and, and speak to someone 
about um, what we have on file or, or, or even see what payments we have scheduled for you. Um, but, but I, I, if this is good news, it might be that the payments, you know, the first round of payments are going out today. So you should know uh, relatively soon whether or not um, the amount that you're expecting to get is, is what we sent out. And, and if, if there is a mistake, then um, we, we definitely encourage you to, to let us know and, and update the information as soon as you can. Okay, and then just one follow-up for that. So working from the back end, going through the IRS site, just to see if that is current and that'll help me better understand the child tax credit payment on the other side. Yes, because okay. because our systems are just, um, it, it, you know, it, when the, when the return is either e-filed or someone manually inputs information from a paper return, our, our records are automatically updated. And if, if the three children were correctly, um, you know, if the return was accepted as, as it was filed correctly, then I, I think I can't even imagine a scenario where, where somehow a, a child would have been um, left out somehow. So I, I think you're probably good to go. Okay. But, but I know things happen. <laughs> Fingers crossed, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and I'll cross mine too. <laughs> thank you. And it's not just today, right? Like today it was just rolled out. So it's going to be over a course of days. Is, am I understanding that correctly too? Right, right. Like okay. checks would have been mailed out today, but, um, but you know, there's, there's a delay with getting those. I did, I mean, I can't speak for everyone. I have heard from people that got direct deposits that, that were pending deposits yesterday that have gone through today. Um, but I wouldn't panic yet if, you know, if you don't have it today, it okay. should be this week though. Yes. Amazing. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Okay. Just to be clear. So the direct deposits are not all necessarily happening today or I, <laughs> I, I believe they are, but I, but I know with the economic impact payments there, there were waves. Um, there has been absolutely no mention of that. Um, you know, anything internal, only or or external. So I, I'm I'm not aware of that being the case, but uh, but sometimes things just sometimes things take a, a day or two to to shake out. So and, and different banks sometimes have different rules about I think holding on to pending deposits and things. So um, I, I think they all all went out today. But if you don't see it today, I, I wouldn't panic. Maybe panic tomorrow. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. Thanks, Kate. Yeah. Don't don't panic. Call your congressman. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yes, you can use that uh, casework form I put in the chat earlier on. Feel free to reach out to us that way. I do see some of us have our hands raised. Um, if you do have your hands raised, just a reminder to use the chat feature to first ask your question. I will call on you um, for, to have your question be addressed. Also, when you do so, please include the town you are from. Sometimes we have multiple people in here with the same name, and I just want to be able to distinguish uh, between everyone on this call. With that, let's go to Scott from Bernardsville. Scott, can you hear us? Scott M., do we have you? No worries. Let's go to Julia from Hillsborough. Julia, can you hear us? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, I wanted to understand if I wanted to opt out of the payments, um, is the only way to do that is to go into irs.gov and create an account? Because if you're just a normal filer and you've never had any um, contact specifically with the IRS, you wouldn't normally have an account, right? So I have to create an account, upload a photo and all that. Well, actually, um, I will answer your question, I promise. Regarding the account, uh, we have accounts for everyone. Our, our system does. And the I think last year or the year before, um, we made it available. We made the option available for you to register yourself to have it to have an online account so that you could access our records. Um, so it, it would be something that already exists if you file tax returns, um, but you certainly don't don't have to use that. Uh, the best way to opt out, if you can, is to use that CTC up portal. But if that does not work, um, I am told there is a phone number specifically for people who want to opt out. It is an 800 number. It's 800 908 
4184 again 800 9084184 um i haven't had any complaints uh after i've given the number out so I called it myself, to be honest. I just wanted to make sure, I wanted to see what would happen before I recommended it. And I, I didn't get to speak to anyone because I, I, um, I didn't have a lot of time, but, but uh, I, I have not heard anyone let me know that that did not work for them. Um, so I would try that. And, you know, if not, you could, and I, this is probably the last thing you want to do. You could make an appointment at a local taxpayer assistance center. Um, and I think they could update your account because it would essentially be the same as calling in uh, on the phone. They would have the same level of access to your account. But I would try that phone number. Um, oh, but I, so I, I don't understand if I, if I, if you're saying that everybody who's filing taxes has an account, how would I access it? Because I, you know, since I've never set it up, right, I don't have a username or a password or anything like that. You would, you would have to do that. In fact, um, if and, you don't and mind. And upload a photo, right? It's asking for a photo. Uh, oh, you know what? I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. So the, it's confusing. The, the CTC Up portal um, actually is, there's two different ways to access it. You can use your IRS account that you've already set up in a separate system or there's that ID me verify system. Um, that is actually done by a third party. I don't know much about that other than people are, are not loving it. Um, that does ask for, I think your driver's license, uh, it asks you to upload that. And many people are not comfortable putting exactly. that kind of exactly. information out there, which I completely understand. But you actually don't have to use the ID me. There is another um login that you can create just on the irs website now you do I have see. to verify your identity but you don't have to um it's not it's not does not require a photo id or uploading any like birth certificates <laughs> nothing like that um okay. it's it's actually if you go to irs.gov i think it says view your account it's right on the main landing page it's one of the first um there's there's like eight boxes that you see in it. I think it says view your account. If you click on there, you can uh, you can set up your own login there and then you can use that login for the CTC up portal. Very good. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks, Julia. We are going to go back to Scott from Bernardsville. Hi, this is uh, Scott Mason. I'm from Bernardsville. Uh, thanks so much for having us call. It's, it's very informative. Um, I was just wondering how many families in New Jersey will be getting the credit and how many or the credit or the payment and how many of those families would be considered at or below the poverty line? So uh, I, I have the numbers basically in my head for the seventh district. Okay. Uh, read to you, which I gave at the beginning. So 92,600 kids in our district. Uh, and of those, uh, actually only, if, if, well, it's, we're a fairly affluent district, as you know. So yeah. in our district, about 3000 of those kids would be, uh, lifted above the poverty line. So probably maybe more, you know, mm -hmm. if, 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 if we, if the rule of thumb is about 50% of kids below the poverty line will be lifted above it, um, say, you know, 3,000 out of 6,000, right, in, in, in our district would, would be. Uh, I would imagine, and Nareed, I don't know if you have New Jersey-wide statistics, or we could probably get them very quickly and put them in the chat. Yeah, uh, okay. I'll put, the, yeah. um, I'll that, put okay. both the New Jersey 7 statistics in the chat, and then I'll get those uh, New Jersey statistics into See if the we chat can get that. before the end of the call. Oh, that's Hey, that's great. And uh, could you get it break broken down by income level? Because that would mean like 89,000 children just in our district alone are getting these payments and they're not in the in poverty. Correct. Um, say, could we get it broken down by maybe $100,000? Like how many families making $400,000 are going to be getting these payments? Because that is just fascinating to me. So the payment would... Uh, it, it, you, you, you may be getting a payment at that income level, but it would be very, very small. 
They right. They, they, <laughs> if right. I may, for for each thousand exactly. dollars that you go above the th the cutoff threshold, um, it reduces the payment by by fifty dollars or the credit by fifty. So you know, if you're starting with a credit of three thousand dollars, and you know, each thousand dollars above one hundred and fifty thousand, you go down. It reduces by 50, you know, the 3000 goes down to 2,950. So it, it does, you know, it, it would be a very small payment at that income level. Yes, for sure. Oh, I get it. I was just curious because all of us on this call who do not have children uh, and pay taxes are actually going to be paying folks on this call who have children make $400,000 a year, something. We will be paying them something. Yeah, that's a longer, conversation. So in terms of how we pay for this, it's it's not going to be through any increase in individual tax rates. But it will be by taxpayers, whether they're whether they pay a little bit of tax or a lot of tax, some portion of it, some portion of what every one of us on this call pays in taxes will be going to pay that. It will be reducing taxes for people in those income brackets. Yeah. So right. look, okay. the, in our district, and, and again, you we can totally fair to debate this, whether it's good policy or bad policy. Uh, yep. I, I like it. I think it's good policy. I, I, I think in our district, which is, again, more affluent, this operates very much as a middle class tax cut for most of the people who will be receiving it on the theory that if you have kids, you know, even a family making $100,000 a year does have a different set of needs than, than a family at that income level who, who doesn't have kids. And We've had this in our tax system uh, for forever, right? I mean, we've had both deductions and credits for families with kids for decades in our tax system. This is just something that expands it and most importantly makes it fully refundable. And so the overwhelming share of the benefit of this will, will go to folks at, at a lower income rate because of that. Whereas before, interestingly, um, that family making $100,000 a year was getting a bigger benefit than a family making $20,000 a year because the family making only $20,000 a year might not have owed taxes and therefore without a refundable credit, they weren't getting anything, right? So, yes. so this is actually- no, I'm, I'm, on, board, I'm on board with the, with the family making 20,000. It's the family's making 100,000 and over. Well, I get it. It kind of blows my yeah, mind. That's, that's, a, that's a choice and it's totally fair to debate that. Okay, cool. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank really appreciate both. it. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Kate. Again, I do see uh, some people in the chat or some people in this call do have their hands raised. Just a reminder to use the chat feature to ask your question. We are going to do uh, one more FAQ as well. Um, this was very popular uh, for some of the pre-submitted questions. But do people get this credit if they don't have income to report? So yes, yes, they do. And um, the, the reason is because it is, as the Congressman just said, it is, it is a fully refundable credit, meaning that if you don't have a tax liability, um, you, you could still get the credit. Uh, and it would essentially be a, a refund, but, but it, would, it would come in that form, but, but not necessarily be a refund. Um, but, but the short answer is yes. Yes, you don't. If you if you don't have a filing requirement, you can still get the um, the tax credit. Yes. Thanks, Kate. Mm -hmm. We still uh, we have time for many more questions. So if you do have questions, please just use the chat feature at the bottom of your screen, and we'll do some more FAQs before then as well. Is the expanded child tax credit only for this year? Yes, as of right now, it is. Um, I will. I don't know if the congressman wants to say any more about that, but but my answer is yes. <laughs> yes. So um, the American, it was in the American Rescue Plan, which was a, a, our COVID relief for the most part legislation earlier this year. So um, I, I again, I like this, as you can tell. I think it's good policy. I, I think it'll. Uh, it's good for the country in the long run. So I'm hoping that we make it permanent. There will be an effort to make it permanent in uh, the budget reconciliation bill, as we're calling it, that we are uh, preparing right now in the House and the Senate. 
Our next order of business in terms of big priorities in Congress is passing the infrastructure bill. Uh, we have a bipartisan agreement on a bill that will fix our bridges and roads and invest in our railways and build that Hudson River, the gateway tunnel that we need in New Jersey uh, and create a lot of jobs doing uh, that good stuff. So that's number one. Uh, number two, uh, we have a bill that will address a lot of healthcare, education, workforce issues. And that's where we hope to make this permanent. And of course, I would be uh, very eager to have everybody's uh, thoughts about that over the coming weeks. Let me know what you think, uh, whether you agree or disagree. Uh, we will, uh, we will uh, always take that into account. Yes, absolutely. Feel free to contact our office. I'll put our contact form into the chat feature as well. And we are going to go back to Adrian. Adrian from Berkeley Heights, can you hear us? Yes, I can, thank you so much. Um, Kate, uh, sorry to bother you with a follow-up. Just to be clear, there's no way to, I think you had mentioned this before, there's no way to confirm whether we would receive a paper check or direct deposit, correct? Because the, the only reason I'm asking is my husband and I only received the stimulus check, the stimulus direct deposit yesterday. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Quite, <laughs> wow. Quite okay. Quickly. Very exciting to get it, but quite late. Um, and we did get that via direct deposit. So if that was received in that, you know, using that vehicle is, can we assume the same will be for the child tax credit? Uh, first of all, you are not bothering me at all. And so, that's a great question. I'm sure other people have that as well. So you're not bothering me. Um, and, but yes, I, I, you know what they say about assuming, <laughs> <laughs> I think in this case, it, it's okay. Uh, I, I, you know, because, because clearly we have deposit information on file for you. So, um, so and that's great news that that must mean uh, something, something positive happened with, with the processing of your return. So that's great. And I, I would, yes, I would keep an eye on the bank. I, I think that's where your advance payment will come. Yes. Wonderful. Thank you so much. No Thanks, Adrian. We did have someone in the chat ask about resources in other languages for the child tax credit as well. Uh, first off, our office has put together um, some frequently asked questions in Spanish. So we, I did just put that resource into the chat feature if that's something that you would like to share around. And the IRS does have resources in other languages as well. I am putting that page into the chat feature. Um, that's another great resource to share with friends or family. Um, who has English as a second language. And this will be our last call for questions. We have no more questions in the chat feature, but I do have one more FAQ. So if anything else comes on in, we will answer it. Uh, but I am going to give one last FAQ and this is the last call for questions. May I just, oh. um, uh, regarding the foreign languages, I, I believe that the child tax credit IRS web pages are available in all the languages. Uh, for which there's an option to choose on irs.gov. I did see a couple of them yesterday. So I, I think this information um, just specific to child tax credit is available as well on irs.gov, just FYI. <laughs> Thanks, Kate. I, I, but is that true of the, the, the kind of opt-in, opt-out portal? Uh, I don't think it is. I, that probably is not, that, that is probably only available in English and Spanish, if, if even Spanish at this time, but, but, I, but the information pages are available, but yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, that's, that's something we got to fix. Absolutely. And for one more question, will getting the child tax credit hurt eligibility for other programs? Uh, so, I'm, I'm not exactly sure because it, it is a, it is a tax credit. I, I don't think so. I know the economic impact payments do not, but I think, I think a, a, a refundable credit is the same um, in terms of it's not considered income. So it, it, it wouldn't be factored in when you apply for, um, for other programs. Uh, it, it wouldn't count towards your income. Yes, that that is that's what it's supposed to how it's supposed to work. Yeah. 
And just going off of that, it will also not affect your SNAP benefits, uh, food stamps, Medicaid. So things like that, it will also not affect. No. Correct. All right. I do see we have one person with their hand raised. I am going to see if they have that question and would like to unmute. Laura, would you like to unmute and ask your question? All right. Totally fine. Well, thank you everyone for being on this call today. I'm going to turn it over to both Kate and the Congressman for some closing remarks. And uh, again, I put that contact form into the chat feature. So if you have any additional questions, please go ahead and reach out to us that way. Thanks everyone. Okay. Well, thank, uh, thank you so much. Uh, thanks Nari for organizing us. Thank you, Kate, for as always providing very uh, helpful expert information. Um, you know, we, we pass these laws and we try to make them simple, but they're never 100% simple. So uh, we, we really rely on you to, to help us navigate uh, all of this. Uh, and, and thanks everyone for participating. I, I hope you'll, you'll share this information with others. Uh, of course, anybody can reach out to our office uh, if, if they encounter uh, difficulties uh, through the, the casework page that, that Nari posted. Uh, my, uh, my job is to make sure that, that every single person I represent receives the benefits that they are entitled to under the law. And for, you know, I think 99% of, of, of us, that will be fairly simple and automatic. Um, but for, for everybody who finds themselves in, in a special situation, we will, we will go to bat for you. Um, and again, I, I think this is a, a fantastically important development. It's an idea that, uh, that has been championed by really thoughtful people on both sides of the political aisle for many, many years among Republicans in Congress, uh, Senator Romney, Senator Rubio uh, uh, have been championing this, this idea. And of course, many Democrats like me uh, as, as well, uh, we think this is good policy um, and of course, we'll all be watching very carefully over the next few months, how it actually works in practice and how you experience it in, in, the, in real life. So please share those thoughts with us as, as the year goes on. With that, thank you, thank you. And I'm sure I'll see you at, uh, at some other events soon. Okay. Sounds good. Bye. Thank you so much.